Hi, I'm Sarish Sudhakaran and in this video, we'll analyze the cinematography of Santosh Shivan, probably the most well-known cinematographer from India. Not only has he won numerous awards in India, but he is also the first Indian cinematographer to become a member of the ASC. The goal of this video is to break down his technique so you have a starting place to learn more about his work. Right up front, I have to say, the quality of the footage available for many old movies is sad. It is unfortunate how these great movies haven't been preserved for posterity. I hope the respected directors will get these prints rescanned and come out with good digital copies in 4K Blu-ray. If India ever had a superstar cinematographer, it is Santo Shivan. Today he directs his own movies, pushing storytelling boundaries. The Terrorist, probably his best work as director, is on Roger Ebert's list of all-time great movies. Santo Shivan is from a family of filmmakers and cinematographers. His grandmother encouraged him to sketch at an early age. The art of Kerala, his home state and my home state as well, is imbued in his cinematography. He hates to copy another's work and insists on finding his own reasons and motivations to take on projects. Together with the great Mani Ratnam, possibly the greatest director India has ever produced after Satyajit Ray, he has made movies that were blockbusters when released and are now historical milestones in storytelling and cinematography. When the world thinks of Indian cinema, they think of Bollywood as one homogenous mass, but in reality there are many film industries in India. The southern industries probably rival Bollywood in terms of revenue, and according to some, outclass it in terms of cinematography and storytelling. Typically, not much time or respect is given to the cinematographer, which is why a majority of shoots often employ the Anjanu Optimo 25-250. They have to make poor or tacky production design work. Santo Shivan made any location look like a work of art. He made bad actors look good. Due to his stature, the directors he works with give him a lot of creative freedom. He loves the 2.39 aspect ratio, both anamorphic and spherical. But when he has to, he can change, as he did with Irwer. Earlier, he preferred the Airy Airyflex camera and Kodak stock. Nowadays, he shoots on both the Alexa and RED cameras. He doesn't have a favorite lens. He picks whatever is necessary to translate his vision to screen. One of his first big movies was Dalapati, a story based on Karna, the child of the sun god. He used the sun in subtle ways to show how it influences the main protagonist's storyline, especially the scene where he confronts his mother in the sun god's presence. As far as lighting is concerned, his early work is different from his modern work. In the 90s, he typically backlit his actors. It was the vogue in those days. He had many signature techniques that stood out. Though not exclusively his invention, he used nuclear back and rim lights that deliberately props up stars as ornaments. Indian cinema revolves around the star system. The more ethereal a star looks, the better. The next is to have a strong side rim light that also acts as a backlight when the actor turns. In addition, on close-ups, he used a soft side light or under light often. Today, his lighting has become subtler, more realistic, especially on his own films, which are high contrast and naturalistic. He tries hard to get his actors to not wear makeup, or at least as less of it as possible. Yet, when he works on big budget movies, he continues to use the backlight technique. Nowadays, he also adds a lot of color separation to make things interesting. On exterior locations, he uses the silhouette, a classic way to add variety to compositions when working with limited locations. Another classic way to make a star godlike is to shoot from the low angle, and it also hides bad backgrounds from the shots. For me, Santo Shivan cinematography stands out in two areas. One is the landscape. He is personally drawn to nature. He indulges in farming and spends time in the Amazon to unwind. Landscapes are important characters in his films, and his brilliance shines through when he has the land as a companion. The second area where his work stands out is close-ups. I don't think there's another cinematographer who does close-ups better. He studies the face like it's a landscape, and this is where sketching helps. He finds those stunning expressions that bring out the right emotional impact, and he can do it again and again and again. He uses both hard and soft light and isn't afraid of contrast. It is refreshing to see he uses light with purpose. He never tries to match the Hollywood system. On exteriors, he oftentimes shoots in available light or golden hour and barely uses kinoflows for fill. 
I think his finest work is in Iruvar. Iruvar also happens to be my favorite Indian movie ever. It is a colossal feat of direction, acting, sound design, and cinematography. I saw it in theaters five times when it released. If you find the Indian song and dance system confusing, then Iruvar is its finest example. The camera moves, compositions, long takes are so skillfully executed, you don't notice them at all. It should be mandatory viewing for any student of cinematography. It's shameful Shivan and Maniratnam labored over the visuals and prints back then, while today all we have is a DVD copy. Santo Shivan has many more projects lined up and he isn't done yet. You can't help but anticipate another great movie from this master of light and shadow. I hope this brief video makes you curious enough to learn more about the brilliant cinematography of Santo Shivan. The best way to learn more about him is to watch his movies and his excellent interview at the BFI. I'll publish an exclusive PDF of extra notes and thoughts on his cinematography on Patreon. You'll find the link in the description. Please support Wolf Crow on Patreon. If you like this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos like this one, please subscribe. There are lots more on the way. Stay happy, stay free. Bye now.